Uh, GM, everybody, welcome to another episode of Wake and Jake. We're going to pick through uh, the stuff to look out for the week, kind of cover some stuff that happened since our last episode. Uh, we're going to talk through macros, some different plays and stuff you should be looking out for. As always, the show is NFA, not financial advice. So take everything with a grain of salt, do your own research. And uh, we just want to kind of get the conversation going and get the, the brain juices flowing. So hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, Jake, how was your weekend, man? How are you, how are you doing, brother? Yeah, man, I was good. Like we were talking about, uh, watch Deadpool. It's kind of kind of chill weekend for me. Uh, one one of the only week weekends in the summer I haven't been like doing something. Uh, kind of just chilled at home for the most part. Did wedding stuff. Uh, to prepare. There's a lot of shit coining actually. Um, talk about it later. Um, there's a lot of shit coining events happening over the weekend uh, with the Nero stuff. Um, yeah. Besides that, it's all been great. Uh, Bitcoin uh, and then a lot of other stuff has been pumping over the weekend. We saw a dump this morning, uh, like right as we hit 70K. Uh, we'll get into that as well. But uh, yeah, man, all good over here. How are you? How are you feeling? Excellent. All yeah, good, eager, to, eager to hear about your shit coining. Yeah, I wanted to call out. Yeah, it's like we're losing you a little bit. It's like it kind of got worse as you went there. I don't know if you're getting rugged or if the mic is in protest yet again. But um, oh, man. We'll, all right. we'll, we'll, We'll get it sorted. Yeah, we'll get it sorted. Um, give him a second here. Yeah, I had a, I had a great weekend. Uh, I know he's not here to hear my answer, but uh, yeah, I had my 31st birthday. Got my grill going finally. Uh, saw the Deadpool movie. It was sweet. Beat the Elden Ring DLC, which was probably the highlight of my week last week. Uh, no spoilers, of course. Keep you guys safe there. House of the Dragon was super lit last night. Again, no spoilers there. So uh, yeah, it was a pretty dope week. Crypto's pumping. Well... Seems like it feels like it's pumping. It's weird because uh, I was checking just like the charts and my notes and stuff. Same exact price. Uh, 68K is where we were at uh, when we did our show last week. But uh, sentiment feels a lot different. I mean, we dipped down to 64 and then uh, right. rallied, rallied back up. Welcome back, G. Yeah, I was just kind of kind of going through everything on the week. Uh, it, it's kind of weird. So Bitcoin is at 68K when we did our show last week, but it feels completely different now just because we've dipped down to 64 and then rallied back up. We hit 70. So um i think yeah i think we're just kind of dipping uh, yeah bouncing off that a little bit you know that sort of resistance but uh who knows maybe maybe we'll blast through this week eager to hear about macro and stuff mike check one two how are we looking brother we're good that one uh that one was on me oh. that time it was unplugged and i didn't realize it <laughs> <laughs> there he so, is hand up, hand up. that one's on me uh hopefully these uh, uh never ending mic troubles Hey man, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta make, make people work for it, you know. They gotta strain yeah. to hear you. Appreciate all the happy birthdays in the chat. Thank you guys. Uh, now that you're older, doesn't feel any different, but uh, I'll take it. Happy birthday, man! Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. So, talk to us about macro, man. What's going on with Bitcoin? Um, was there was there big news from Bitcoin conference? Uh, you know, ETFs. To, hit, hit us with it all, man. Top to bottom. How how how's the market looking out there? Yeah, like you were just mentioning about Bitcoin. Um, looks like uh, in the past week we're up about one point five percent. I'm seeing in the, on the seven day. We notably had ETH ETFs launched last week. Uh, we'll talk about that too. But I'm gonna focus on Bitcoin to start. Um, yeah, we knew we we we, we pumped over the weekend. Uh, it was kind of like a slow uh, rise on the weekend, and then we saw. Um, you know, just a, a barely tap 70k and then an instant dump. Um, I think open interest is pretty high right now. Uh, you can kind of look at there's a good um site called Coin Analyze, I like to look at um some of these stats. I'll post it in voice hangout chat, which is where you know we have our discussion for the show. Um, uh, if you, have, you guys ever have comments, questions, or whatever, and you can't talk, um, that's right. I'm gonna post a lot of links as well, just a reminder. Um, but yeah, this shows open interest uh, along with price. You can see it's kind of going up a lot. It's, it's like the highest it's ever been. Um, or not ever been, but uh, at least like this year. Um, so a lot of leverage out there right now. And I think that's kind of what where we saw this, um, you know, the kind of psychological barrier or a resistance of 70K. Uh, we saw quite a bit of dump there, I think. I'm still feeling, I guess, in general, very bullish. I'll go over, uh, you know, some even more reasons why in these in the notes. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, kind of just to recap a couple of things from last week. I think we saw some really big events, um, notably start off Trump being at the 
Bitcoin conference uh, in Nashville that we just had. Um, here's a tweet kind of just giving a recap of of what he said uh, in the conference. But um, some really big, really big uh, bullish factors. I mean, we already knew, you know, he was running on a pro uh, crypto pro Bitcoin um, campaign, but he kind of gave out some actual details for the first time uh, of, of what that would look like. And um, he mentioned, um, you know, firing Gary Gensler in day one, which got like a huge applause, uh, obviously. Um, and then, you know, governments, so a couple other notable things, government's going to keep all the Bitcoin it owns, which it currently is the largest holder, I believe. Um, if I had that right, just from the seized Bitcoin that it's um, it's grabbed over, over I think, about over uh, a couple of different I guess lawsuits. Um, and also, uh, so that's great for sell pressure. Um, and then also the biggest thing, which honestly is probably like the most bullish thing I've I maybe have ever seen, I would say, like piece of news, which would be US creating a, US, a strategic reserve of Bitcoin. I don't think like I think people have have, have talked about this, obviously, um, on the timeline. I've seen chatter of it, but I don't know if I've seen like enough bullishness on if this was actually going to happen. Um, I, it would be absolutely massive if it if it actually came true. Um, it's almost like it's almost like too good to be true. So I like I'm not giving my hopes up by any means. Like obviously Trump would have to be elected first for this to even happen. Um, and then he'd also, he'd also have to follow through with it. Um, so there's it's not like it's a guarantee by any means. But the fact that um, of it being a possibility and a promise from him um, that they would they would even signal that they would do this is is pretty massive in my opinion. Um, Senator uh, Loomis kind of gave a little more detail on that, talking about how um, like early she introducing a bill actually of of it being about one million Bitcoin that the U.S. government would buy, um, which would equal five percent of the total supply of Bitcoin, about just just under five percent. It's what twenty one million total supply. Um, which is which is an insane amount uh, of buy pressure, um, kind of give you a little bit of a thought. Um, the Bitcoin ETFs or comparison, the Bitcoin ETFs have about 17 billion of total net inflows so far. Um, so that's about three X that a little less than three X. But the Bitcoin ETFs have a buy pressure and I think that would, that'd be over five years. Um, the strategic reserve, I believe, was the initial um estimate um obviously these numbers can certainly change um so i wouldn't take any of that um super hard but just the fact that they want to buy that much um is is a strong signal and i think even bigger than that buy pressure itself um is just the legitimacy that, that it would bring for the u.s government to have bitcoin on their in on their i mean essentially their balance sheet in their treasury um it just gives a green light to, I mean, every other government in the world, um, you know, to every pension fund out there, corporate treasuries that that Bitcoin's a legitimate asset to keep on their balance sheet or or to invest in or it's like in as part of their portfolio. Um, I think that's like it's absolutely massive um, if that were to happen. And there would be also be like a race to obviously front run. Um, the government as well if they did lay out like a specific plan of a certain amount of bitcoin like people would want to buy before the government buys because they know the government's buying and it, it'd kind of be like a snowball effect type thing um so yeah just absolutely massive um i got a question was, here i'm curious yeah. did they did they say what the point of the strategic reserve is like at first i'm just kind of laughing to myself um but then i'm like i'm curious because like i'm just picturing strategic oil reserves, right? Like they release in times of crisis and, and, and to counter oil prices and stuff like that. Is this just an investment? Like, does he just think it's bullish? Like, does this number go up? Like, what? Well, I can't, like, why would they need a strategic reserve of Bitcoin, you know? So like, why would they ever need to release that? Or is it is just a hold? Really confused. What, what was like the messaging there? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know exactly what their thought process is. Um, I'm not sure. I actually haven't I didn't I didn't hear like the exact um, speech. I just saw like the bullet point parts of it. Um, 
Like what Waft Dog says in chat to pay off the national debt, that would make sense. I so think, it literally you know. is just a yeah, it's a bet, it's an investment number go up. So we're gonna buy some. We think it's gonna go higher. That's pretty wild. What I think it's fuck? like anything like portfolio, like you want to diversify um your assets and, and it kind of just like it gives legitimacy as like another like holding gold, for instance. Like the US holds a bunch of gold, even though it's not the currency isn't backed by gold um anymore. Like one like one for one or, but um still like they they hold a bunch of gold um on hand the u.s does and it would be similar to that where it kind of gives like a backing of uh your currency so to pro protect against any type of like uh you know crazy inflation in the future um yeah that makes total sense I, yeah i guess i was just thrown by <clears throat> some of the terms like strategic and stockpile like i don't know just like Bro, just say you're buying a bag, you know, like, I don't know, it doesn't, it feels like, a, I don't know, maybe I, I'm not educated on the topics. There could absolutely be other strategic assets and stuff that are strictly just store value. Uh, so I could sound like a fool, but uh, I just, I was just chuckling to myself. Like, what the fuck? You know, like, I'm just picturing that we're like, oh, we're, we're releasing Bitcoin to the people, uh, you know, to, to counter. I don't know. It just seems silly. Yeah. So pretty, pretty awesome. Um, again, like this is. Like Shaggy says, you know, it's mostly just vote harvesting. Um, I mean, I, I agree. It's like, for the most part, you know, um, for both sides, I think they're trying right now to do everything they can to get as many votes as possible, like on each side. So, again, like I'm not I'm not saying these things are going to come true by any means. Like, we'll see. But the fact even that they're talking about them um, is helpful for at least the current market um, that that there is this possibility um out there as opposed to them not talking about it at all and they're not being a possibility so um all this pro this the super bullish you know possible um bitcoin stuff is still is still a positive um it's still better than nothing right yeah the For point sure. is the point is it's in the rhetoric yeah the fact that they're even discussing a uh reserve of bitcoin is yeah insane like this would be uh crazy if we could go back and tell ourselves a year ago that this would even be in the discussion you know it's pretty wild yeah, and on a similar note, um, the Democrats are also um, kind of realizing, it seems, with a change to Kamala now in their kind of seeing polls, they're realizing uh, that Bitcoin is a, a pretty big major issue, um, or crypto in general is a, is a pretty major issue for, even though it's a smaller percentage of voters, it is a major issue for those voters, which which really matters. Um and so they're they're starting to kind of realize that being anti crypto isn't helping them uh, too much. Um, so here's a, a tweet I just linked in Voice Hangout chat. Um, there's there's actually about twenty different Democratic congressmen and candidates just wrote a letter. Um, I think it was a couple of days ago to the DNC, the Democratic National Com Committee, basically asking for a, a policy switch to be more pro crypto. Um their platforms um you know some of the main points they have in this letter uh it's a pretty quick read if you want to if you want to um check it out but um basically it lists four main uh points on here it was pro digital asset language in the pro party platform so you know s some some actual uh you know i guess policy changes within uh you know the platform that they present themselves that is pro digital assets um second one is selecting a, a vice president candidate that is pro crypto or, or at least crypto sophisticated um on policy uh third one would be replacing gensler so we see that again neither neither party um uh looks like gensler is is not long for his job um saying replace gensler with a pro crypto sec chair um and then the fourth one is engaging in industry experts um, on policy. So um, no, obviously not as like outwardly bullish as what Trump's, um, you know, talk was at the Bitcoin conference, but still um, a pivot for sure from wh what we were seeing with the current, um, you know, administration's, you know, attack um, against crypto and, their, and the anti crypto rhetoric coming from like Elizabeth Warren. It seems like they want to they want to um, change pace here with with Kamala now and, and be more crypto centric. We also saw um, uh, Mark Cuban said Kamala reached out to him um, about 
you know, getting, uh, you know, advice, um, on, on crypto related topics. I'm not sure exactly what it was that they talked about. Um, and then she also was in contact with a Bitcoin conference, um, ultimately decided not to go over there. Um, but probably at least a good thing that she's at least in contact. Um, but yeah, so either way, again, like I'm not, don't want to get into any type of like political debate at all. Um, this is we're purely looking at this because it affects our industry. And um, so it matters. It's a, it's something that um, got to at least talk about because it, it's it affects our bags. Right. So um want to bring it up, at least in that light. Uh, always have to, you know, do a reminder about that. But Absolutely, yeah, man, yeah. Uh, great to see from both sides that we there's a chance, at least, you know, again, <laughs> we said, it, you know, it's not like this is a for sure thing that it's going to be um, implemented. Like they're obviously like their main goal is to get votes. Um, but it's at least like a positive that we're seeing, uh, you know, the rhetoric be pro crypto um, starting to be uh, at least on both sides now. Um, um, so it's at least good until the election. Right. And then we'll see what happens after. Totally. Yeah. I went ahead and dropped an F in the chat for Mr. Gary Gensler. Sounds like he's cooked, man. Both sides, uh, both sides coming after him. Uh, I wanted to ask you, I know we're, we're staying away from the political stuff. Uh, just mentioned it where it is, you know, absolutely applicable. I just wanted to ask you, um, who are you voting for? <laughs> just kidding, man. Just kidding. Beautiful. Does anybody want to jump in and add any, any color here on just sort of, uh, Political landscape. Uh, I know we're trying to 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 walk on glass here and uh, not ruffle any feathers. Just strictly strictly about the money, right? Strictly about number go up or down. Uh, but if anybody has any any thoughts or opinions, feel free to jump in here. Then we can uh, move it on to the uh, next part of the market. Oh, THC. I was just going to chime in real quick and say Please. completely agree with what Jake said. Um, but just to point it out, I know currently a headline I saw over the weekend is that. Elizabeth Warren is pushing pretty hard for an anti-crypto bill. So there are still people um, within the government who are working to push anti-crypto le legislation. Um, that was prior to that letter that Jake sent. I mean, still doesn't necessarily mean that they would adopt it, but just, just a reminder that, you know, nothing's guaranteed. So definitely seems like it's more likely than not that it would be a pro crypto stance, but there still are people in the Senate and making legislation that would attack crypto. So nothing is a guarantee or gimme quite yet, as always the friendly reminder. Yeah, good shout. Good shout. Got to hear both sides of it. Cue up all of the TikToks of Elizabeth Warren sounding like a buffoon talking about crypto. <laughs> yeah. There yeah, she seems to be on a bit of an island, I would say. Um, I haven't really seen anyone else be anti-crypto besides Elizabeth Warren. Um, I'm not super worried about that. You look at her like record as well uh, with bills. She has like a terrible record, I think. Oh, I just looked it up. 11 out of 30, 333 bill, or sorry, 330 bills have ever passed from Elizabeth Warren. So, wow. Um, I have no context, but that sounds abysmal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really either. I don't know like what the what the what the normal batting average is there. Uh, <laughs> but not great. Um so I'm not super worried. It seems like from what I've seen, um it's going the other way, but yeah, we'll see. Uh it's it's certainly something uh, a good thing to note there. Beautiful. Did you have more on Bitcoin or were you going to uh, take us to another topic? Cuz if 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 we're moving on, I have a question here for you. A little little game for you for Bitcoin. Yeah, if no one else has anything, I was going to transition to ETH. Okay, beautiful. Before we move on, I want to play a little game with you, a little over-under guessing game here. So I'm going to write down your answer, and we're going to check it uh, for our next episode, which is uh, 12 Eastern, June 5th. See you guys there. Oh, um, you tell me, is Bitcoin going to be over or under 75K Whoa. next week when we start our show? 75. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, and 75k. I'll say under. That's quite a jump. A lot can happen in a week. All right, we're locking I think in 70 under. 70k is their line, or maybe 72k. But all right, we'll put you down. We'll put you down under 75. We'll put you at the 72, and then we'll we'll check. All right, beautiful. Yeah. Locked in. Sweet. Well, yeah, you can uh, you can go ahead and take us on uh, ETH. Talk to us about ETH. What? Uh, what have you seen over last week or what are you looking for this week? Yeah, just real quick. Got to mention ETH um, with ETFs launching last week. 
Um, I know I said how Bitcoin was up 1.5 percent the past week. ETH is down 4.3 percent last week, so not a great showing at all um, on the ETH front. Um, you know, we talked about a good amount last week how um, the ETH ETF launch was was probably going to be relatively similar in, in the ways that it worked with how the Grayscale Trust unlocks a lot of ETH that can now be sold um, out of it and that will likely be sold out of it because it's a higher fee uh, and people have been waiting on that. Um, they kind of bought it at, a, at this discounted rate and now they can finally redeem it. Um, so a lot of the people likely will. Um, and we saw that in the market. Um, we saw, I believe there's uh, 300. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Here's a dashboard uh, for anyone who wants to follow along, post an invoice, hang out chat. Um, actually, dgens.finance is a good <laughs> dashboard, funny enough. Um, I think that's OSF and Mando's project. Oh, my God. I papered so many. <laughs> I papered so many of those, too, dude. I had them at like 0.01, and they went crazy. Anyway. Uh, but, yeah, you can see for Bitcoin, Andy. Um, there's yeah 341 net outflows so far, so not good uh, on the ETH front. Um, I would say the good news is here is that they are the outflows are rapid, um, a lot more than what they were from Bitcoin. Um, they're similar size from Bitcoin, um, but the ETH has a lot less um, dollar amount, I guess. Um, it, the ETH, the Grayscale ETH um, trust has a lot less. Um, dollar amount of ETH in it than it had the Bitcoin in it. So um, I guess the percentage of the Grayscale Trust um, that it's selling in, in a day is, is a lot higher. So essentially, I think we're going to get past the outflows faster than we, what we got past with um, Bitcoin, I would say, uh, at this current rate is what it's looking like. I think it had around 10 billion in it and it's already negative 1.5 uh in four days so again we talked about talked about this last week um bitcoin when we saw the price action for bitcoin when it launched uh its etf on january 11th i believe is what the date was um it went down it was basically down only for two weeks straight and then it was up only for like the next month um you know bouncing from like about 40k to almost 70k um, and it seems like people are front running this even more where they're, where they're kind of realizing uh, it's going to go down. So they're they're trying to get out as fast as possible. Um, and I guess I kind of anticipate it is we might be down only for two weeks again. It might be even less than two weeks before we start going up. Um, and then we see some significant, um, you know, pressure to the upside as this as this grayscale ETH trust Um has uh, less and less ETH remaining uh, to, to be released, I guess. It's kind of how my take is on it. So essentially, TLDR, I think the bleeding stops um, after this week, um, maybe even later in the week, and, and we might we might actually see some positive uh, momentum for ETH versus Bitcoin um, as there's less sell pressure coming from the Grayscale Trust. Beautiful. I, I apologize. Could you, I got lost in the sauce a bit there at the beginning. Could you maybe do like a explain like I'm five or a TLDR on the segment where you're talking about why this, like the impact is stronger on the ETH one than it was on the Bitcoin one? Yeah. So if we're looking at, um, so <laughs> yeah, so the, so the grayscale ETH trust, um, is the one that's being sold off right now. Um, and it. it has it has less ETH in it than it had uh, than the Bitcoin one had, but the outflows are similar, uh, maybe just slightly less, but not as much as what the Bitcoin one was. I got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah, so smaller, it, smaller so pool, more relatively, relativity. It's a higher percentage of outflows of the trust than what the Bitcoin trust had. So it basically. There's more money coming out faster than what the Bitcoin trust was coming out. Um, Beautiful. And again, you have to you have to think about how it, ETH is like a third of the market cap of Bitcoin, so it doesn't need as many uh, as as higher of a dollar amount for the price to move. 
as much. If that makes totally. sense. It do, yeah, absolutely does. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, sorry. It's 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 kind of hard to like talk about it without having like the data in front of you to look at uh, when it comes to, when it comes to like all these numbers. Uh, and I'm no. also not the best at articulating it. But I don't know. I was yeah. You know, to your credit, I think you're doing a pretty great job. It was the rest that was crystal clear. That was just the only part that I was hung up on. So yeah, now I get it. Uh, at least I, I feel like I do. Maybe that's a dangerous thing, but uh, I feel like I understand now. <laughs> I'm seeing now that the U.S. government moved $2 billion in Silk Road coins in chain. I'm not sure if they're selling or not, but that's causing more panic. Man, that was another little, uh, little light bulb that went off when you're going through those bullet points that uh, the U.S. is like the biggest holder of Bitcoin. Like, damn, that's just it's mighty American of us uh, just seizing, seizing all of these Bitcoins. Right. Um Oh, God, $2 billion on the move. They, they heard Trump say he's not going to sell anything. They're like, Dump it. Kidding, kidding. Totally kidding, guys. Just just joking. All right. Um, but yeah, that's all that's all I had on ETH front. Um, if you guys have anything else you wanted to chat about there? Any takes from the community? Don't be shy, guys. Let's hear it. It's my it's my one step up. You want a quick uh hot takes from my latest market analysis? Gee, yes, sir. Let's go. Um yeah, it's definitely more of a mixed bag this week. Everyone was obviously super bullish going into the ETH ETF, but we kind of expected to sell the news and obviously yeah, Grayscale is just dumping. So um, seeing anywhere between like, you know, kind of this this week, we could see some pullbacks. And one guy, one of the guys I follow is even seeing potential sweep of like the 2800 those on ETH, which would obviously shake a lot of people out before that next push up. Um, so we'll have to see. It's a pretty big news week. We've got FOMC Wednesday. Um, not expecting any rate cuts, but people are really going to be listening, like what the Fed's saying in terms of if they're looking, because September is like a 90% chance right now for the, for, for the first rate cut. But if they're like, we have no reason to cut <laughs> you know, anytime soon, that could you know, push that back. And then there's big earnings releases. I think uh, Meta's on Wednesday after markets. And then Thursday, you've got Amazon and Apple. So those are definitely going to cause some volatility. And then Friday, you've got non-farm payroll as well. So a lot of pretty big news stuff on the traditional finance side. And yeah, with crypto, I think kind of you hit it on the head, like <laughs> until the grayscale stops dumping, um, we're likely to see kind of continued sell pressure. Um, potentially over the next week or two hopefully like you said maybe it's a little accelerated so it's you know sooner than later but um but yeah the there was a pretty key resistance at like 69.2k on bitcoin that was both the 2021 all-time high and it was like a range midpoint on the four hour time frame and looks like we kind of rejected twice off that pretty hard now so um only other thing i saw was uh Bitcoin dominance obviously going through the roof <laughs> with uh, you know outperforming and is in a pretty clear uptrend right now. So we'll have to you know alts might also kind of suffer in the meantime while ETH is pulling back, unfortunately. Um, but the big winner I'm seeing right now, Solana, it's it's definitely outperforming um, relative to to most things the last couple weeks. So that could give some more attention and eyes to kind of meme coins over there. Um, so that's kind of the the main things I'm seeing. And then I do just want to give a little teaser. Um, I've been working really hard on this new crypto trading edge, um, back testing a lot. And uh, about the same time tomorrow, I'm going to post a field report and kind of go over that with you guys. Um, pretty excited to share this. It's a Bitcoin and ETH uh, kind of trading edge for futures that you guys can check out if you want. What a legend. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you for the, the breakdown. Um... TradFi announcement dates and stuff. Uh, a little teaser for, for what you got coming up. What a Chad. Appreciate the, the info. Yes, sir. Love it. Uh, we didn't talk about Soul. Uh, you just mentioned Fed, but you're right. I think it's, I mean, I mentioned this a ton in the past, but I still think it's like one of my favorite plays for the cycle. It's just, it's just showing so much strength. Um, I won't go over it again and again, but just if you just look at like the seven day, it's, it's like the only coin in my watch list right now that's uh, green over the past week. Uh, everything else is, has been bleeding quite a bit with Bitcoin about flat now after this re most recent dump. What up, Jake? Oh, shit. Here we go. I thought I was yeah. in my bad, guys. What's going on? 
All good, dude. All good. Um, hey, blessed. While you're here, I know you were at the Bitcoin conference. Uh, curious, you know, we were we were kind of chatting a bit about like the Trump uh, stuff as um, his speech. And so I was wondering if you had any like takeaways, maybe any alpha that you heard while you're there. Yeah, nah, not much alpha. You know, the special guest never showed up. I know a lot of people were waiting on that, right? Trying to guess who that was going to be. And uh, yeah, so no special guests, no real alpha from it. Just the events were cool. And uh, that's it. Just, I guess. Okay, no problem. Uh, just had, to, had to check at least in case. Yeah, I would have definitely posted, you know, I would have let <laughs> you know for sure. But uh, it was just a fun ass week. It was a cool week. It was definitely like, you know, the Super Bowl kind of conference kind of feel for uh, Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, it was just like, you know, every uh, every conference, every event from the whole year so far, it's like everybody showed up for this one. And uh, next year, like they said, it's going to be in Vegas. And uh, that's pretty exciting, too. But yeah, no real alpha. Just that's it. Awesome. Thank you, man. Beautiful. Well, uh, anything else on macro, Jake, or uh, can I transition here to a little bit of a little bit of housekeeping? All good in my front. Beautiful. Well, yeah. Well, last week we talked about uh, it was you know before the conference. Figured it would either be something big and hype would happen, or it would be sell the news. Sounds like it was mostly sell the news type event. Uh, we did get some other news last week that was not a sell the news type event, uh, and those were. Couple things from MVHQ, uh, which I, I definitely want to take a minute here to talk about in case anybody missed the announcements or festivities. But uh, last week was really, really big deal. Uh, we had our our town hall. Uh, if you check HQ announcements, there's a write up from Mitch there, covering a lot of the stuff that was talked about, uh, namely updates on our product, our app, and our TGE, uh, which could be coming in Q4. So. Uh, very hyped about that. Uh, it was really, really sweet town hall. The recording is up. Uh, also, again, notes from Mitch in case you want the TLDR. Uh, we also had a birthday celebration, which was, uh, in my opinion, pretty sick. Um, had some some games, some contests, gave out a lot of prizes. We had a poker tournament, which Floppa took down. A lot of fun. Um, also wanted to just point out um, in the town hall, we covered a lot of stuff about our app and just like the uh, the nature of the TGE and how you're going to earn points and, and and reasons to engage with the app and stuff. So uh, definitely check that out if you uh, haven't quite put all the pieces together and how everything interconnects. But I wanted to take a second shout out uh, two missions that we have going on that are going to be ending tomorrow. Uh, one of which is a parallel pack and the other is Ordinal's Legacy, uh, which is a whitelist for their drop. Uh, and during the town hall, we, we pointed out, uh, you know, all these missions are going to have value. So so bare minimum, you're going to want to knock out these free objectives, uh, you know, just follow on Twitter, join the discord, etc. And then uh, you can mint the objectives at the end if you you so feel inclined. Those give a lot more experience, but uh, they come with that four dollar price tag and then also the entry into whatever the giveaway is for. Uh, the parallel one in particular, I wanted to shout out because uh, another update on the app is uh, you can see how many registered participants there are. So how many people actually did the mint objective at the end, uh, which is handy to kind of do the odds on the fly. So if you go check out the parallel mission, you'll see it's a hundred percent chance of winning right now. Um, if you complete the mission to be 200 winners, I think there's 90 that have registered. So if you want to go uh, get some experience on the app, uh, guaranteed win on the parallel, well, at least, you know, TBD there. I mean, more people could enter, but as of right now, it's looking pretty solid. Uh, so go, go give that a check uh, and look, see if you haven't already. And then the final shout out that I wanted to give here is just that we're coming to the end of the month. Uh, so the MVP vote is going to be happening soon. Uh, so definitely get your blesses in. You get one bless every day. So drop those blesses on anyone that has helped you throughout the week. There's also a gang of absolute fire field reports. I'm not going to go through all of them like I usually do. Uh, they're really, really good. Uh, like it's, it's the content is heating up. So go check out those field reports. If you get value from any of those, uh, drop a bless, and uh, let's go. Let's let's finish the month out strong here, uh, and then we'll 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 crown another MVP as we do every month. But just wanted to get those shout outs again. Town hall, birthday event, missions that are ending, MVP votes. Uh, just it's a very exciting time for MVHQ right now. So uh, don't don't fall asleep at the wheel. Get those blesses in and get those uh, those mission experience points in. But that is all I have. Thank you for giving me the soapbox for a second here. Um, what else did you want to, uh, to go through for the week here? I, I know earlier you mentioned uh, talking about doing some shit coining. I'd love to, to hear uh, some updates on your escapades there if you have any calls or shouts for the week. Yeah, um, 
you guys might have seen on Twitter, but there's been an assault. I'll just give a quick recap of this this uh this Nero stuff that's going on. The um for those who didn't see the uh the Dogecoin, uh, like the founder or the uh, the owners, I should say, of the the Doge dog, um, the dog the dog passed away. Um, so they got a new one, right? And there's the new one is named Nero, uh, and they just got this dog. So of course, people are making meme coins out of it. Um, there's this whole debate on which one was the real one and which one is like the good one. Um, it's been it's been a ridiculous amount of PvP uh in the, on in the trenches um and it's actually been pretty insane um how much back and forth uh these coins have i think they flipped market caps like three or four different times where one was the one, one was the higher one the other one was the lower one currently there's one uh winning i should say with like a 50 something million market cap and the other one's around like 15 million um it's been wild. I think there it, it was like a huge discrepancy. And then Ansem came on like a spaces and said um, uh, then said that he didn't like endorses like the lower market cap one. And that's what really caused, um, you know, this 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 PVP to, to, to expand uh, like full blow. Um, so a lot of people are pissed at Ansem for that. Anyway, uh, and then he, he since backtrack and I think endorsed the other one. I don't really know. It's been pretty wild. Um, but besides that, like that kind of that kind of resulted in a lot of liquidity being sucked out of uh, these other coins. Uh, so there's a lot of big dips over the weekend um, that people could buy. And, and we've seen some of the gainers, uh, some of the stronger coins, um, you know, come out of that already uh, back to where they were or even higher. So, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about just meme coins in, in general. I think there's been it's been pretty a decent time in, in the meme coin streets not like amazing um but i wanted to bring it up because i think um there's been some sharp people in mbhq posting about it uh or posting coins uh if you wanted to follow and get involved and this is where kind of the most action in the market has been um and it seems like is is going to continue to be uh especially with nfts being so uh dead uh this is kind of just where the liquidity is and in my opinion where uh, retail is going to come in uh, when they do come in. And, and basically, my thesis is like once we break all time high again for Bitcoin. That's when we're actually going to start to see a real wave. We saw this. You know, it was it was pretty similar timing to 2021 um, where the summer was pretty dull, like in dead, like kind of how it's been here, like super choppy. And then August was where it really heated up, except that was for NFTs. Um, with NFTs not really being as big of a thing, I think that's going to be uh, translating to to meme coins this time around. And we are kind of on the precipice of, of possibly getting back um, above all time high for Bitcoin. Where I could see a lot of new people coming in, um, especially with there there being more pro crypto rhetoric, rhetoric uh, from both sides of the parties. I think that's going to help as well. Just in general, uh, people being more favorable to crypto and not seeing as much as of, of a scam, but actually uh, wanting to get dip, dip back their toes uh, once again. So um, I guess what I'm saying is, is I think it might be a good time to front run, uh, front run the normies and <laughs> in different areas. I don't think you have to. I don't think it's like uh, super pressing at this time. Um, I think once you you can certainly just like wait until all time high break uh if you want to get get back in it it's probably going to be a lot um a lot better market for it but if you do want to kind of get in early on some of the best coins um i think there's there's probably some good options out there or at least you know get your beak wet uh and learn and and hopefully not lose a ton of money it might be too uh i don't want to be like a huge endorsement of this because people get wrecked on meme coins um I guess I'm just saying, like, I think there might be some opportunity out there. Um, out of where I'm looking at right now is like the culture coins uh, have been big lately. Things that have been like big in the uh, a lot of it's like big in like the, the Gen Z uh, area. And I think we're kind of normies are going to, uh, I guess, gravitate towards. Um, they've been kind of ripping like there's. Uh, 
One of my favorites is Aura. Like I've been hearing this this word lately everywhere. Aura. Um, there's a meme for it. I think it's like 60 million market cap or something. Um, you know, I can see I can see normies liking that stuff. Like just like phrases like I don't know on God is one too. This is, I feel so dumb uh, talking about this. I'm not gonna lie. Like it just it just feels stupid to 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 say this. But this is like trying to make money. You know. Um, no, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, we're like we're like old men that are like gather around like in a huddle. Like, what are I the kids like saying? It's, it's like, such a boomer, dude. Oh they're just God. slang terms. Yeah, it's like, oh, the kids are saying this now. Let's uh, buy some <laughs> coins. <laughs> oh my God, it feels so cringe. But look, man, I think honestly, I think it might be like getting back to the season. Or if you just like go on TikTok and see what people are talking about, and if there's like a, a popular coin with like good socials and community rallying behind it that also is like that word or whatever, then like it probably might be like a decent bet. Um, so like kind of that's what that's what, I guess in general, what I'm trying to say is like, I think these culture coins are probably going to be a big thing um, over the next couple months. Um, if we do in fact get um, normies coming in, uh, which I'm certainly hoping. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I am. I guess allocate placing my bets. Um, I think there's um, also, I just want to shout out like a couple uh, resources that I think are good. We've talked about it before. There's been a field report on it. Um, uh, I think uh, OX uh, Fibonacci had a really good one. He actually posted a video, uh, but on Bolex, I think it, it's like far and away, like the best tool right now for shit coining. Um, it's similar to photon, but it just has like better features than photon. Um, it's like a little bit more advanced, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, they're actually doing airdrops, whereas Photon's kind of been like teasing airdrops and then and they never drop. So I think it has more like community love behind it. And they've been the leaders in uh, adding new features as well. So in my opinion, it's like kind of like the market leading tool. Um, I really enjoy using it. Um, I'm not going to show my ref link. You can go to referral links. Um, and I'm sure people will post their bull X there. I'm sure there's uh, some. So if you want to use a fellow members, go over there and use it and get in. So that that's a really good one. And if OXFib just posted his report as well, um, I'd highly recommend uh, bull X if you are going to like get in the shitcoin streets at all. Again, like be super careful. Don't go crazy. If you don't really know what you're doing, don't use like any significant amount of capital because it, it's it's still tough out there. Um, um, but I think it's like a good time to like learn more, uh, and get, uh, acc acclimated, uh, for when people do come and then you'll be, uh, you'll be more prepared once it becomes like easy season is kind of what I'm saying. So don't certainly don't go crazy. Um, also I found this good streamer over the weekend. Um, I really, he's basically like in the, tr in the trenches, uh, a ton, uh, just looking at like new coins and like talking about what he likes to see. He, uh, recently got a lot of traction because he made like a million dollars on chain uh, from the Nero stuff this weekend. Uh, and he's hitting on a lot of other good ones too. Uh, from what I've seen so far, his name's like Soul Shada. Uh, but he's a good one to follow if you ever just want to like turn on a stream and kind of learn a little bit more about shitcoining. Um, I thought he did a good job of engaging and kind of like talking about his thought process uh, on coins and such. Um, so that's another good resource as well. Um, yeah, that's what I got on the meme coin front. What were the names of the, the warring dog coins you were talking about at the beginning? Nero N I or sorry, N E I R O. They're okay. both called, they're both named Nero. Oh my God. It sounds like the Unsold. next, sounds like uh, the next epic rap battles of cryptocurrency has written itself. I don't know what to say. Yeah um i think thought processes like i, I have a, a decent bag into like the bigger one right now i think thought processes like once one does win out it's gonna go crazy because it's the dodge dogecoin owners and like so they'll get a bunch of dogecoin people behind it and obviously dogecoin is the biggest meme coin out there um so it's a big deal um but right now like the pvp's kind of been hurting the hurting the narrative for sure and it could just be it could just kill it altogether. um it, that's certainly possible <laughs> um with how crazy the pvp has been and how long it's lasted um 
Yeah, man, that's all. That's all I got uh, uh, so far on, on the meme stuff. It's a lot, so it's appreciated. Yeah, we'll uh, take a pause here. If anybody has any meme coin takes, uh, shills, projects, ideas, questions, now's the time. Quiet Monday, but that is okay. Um, yeah, on a different note, we again like we have a really strong uh like fantasy sports community in mvhq just given our upbringing from top shot and having a lot of people who are former like dfs uh players even dfs pros uh in here or even current dfs pros so you guys are ever want to get involved in like dfs or rainmakers or best ball uh if you're interested in that sort of thing uh head on to go over to our uh dfs DraftKings thread i think there's a lot of good alpha being shared over there um a lot of strategy like a lot of like discounts and and promos uh that we find um as well as like you know news articles um especially with nfl starting up here uh i think it's gonna only increase uh in our coverage and content in that area so if you ever do want to get involved that's something you like um i think this is like a really good honestly like a super low-key but like very good uh community for it and i don't i don't like to like toot our own horn uh too much uh but i do i i do like sincerely think that we probably have the best like one of if not like most likely like the best um community for nfl rainmakers out there um it's probably like the number one place to be honestly for alpha for for rainmaker stuff so if you want to get involved like this is definitely the place to be well said well shit yeah i mean we're coming up on the hour um people don't seem to have too many questions for us uh or topics so um are, how, how are you feeling are you good is that good for the week or do you have any more things that you wanted to get through or how are you feeling um no i don't have anything else uh join us in the shit coin chat if you want to get involved uh i've been posting a bunch of coins uh, other members have been too would love to have some friends in there uh even more friends uh dissect and you know prevent rugs and hopefully find some find some winners uh it's been fun so far even though i haven't been doing amazing <laughs> it's the friends you make along the way yeah you heard it here folks yep. shitcoin shitcoin focus discussion uh dfs focus discussion those are going to be popping over the next week uh we do have boss dogs today at five eastern so we'll see you guys there in a couple hours uh, but yeah, I think that's I think it's gonna do it for us today. I appreciate everybody rolling through as always each week for some wake Jake. Uh, but any any final words to to send us off with here, Jake? Yeah, I just want to open it up if anyone had any like topics they wanted to touch on before we wrapped it up here. Obviously, Beautiful. We'll be around all day, but yes, sir. Great call. Okay, quiet crowd. Everyone needs their coffee still. I know we need some jot. We need uh, jot on demand or something for the show. Get people going. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, y'all. We'll be around cooking it up. Good, sir. sir. Thanks, everybody.